Last week, we got an exciting update on a camera we hadn't heard from a long time. We heard from the new camera that Canon is working on the R3. That's a 150 high megapixel camera. But a lot of you question, question the reliability of this rumor, and I also did so in this video. But today, I have a credible source from Canon Rumors with more details on this high megapixel camera. Delivering informative capability-based reviews and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. Hi, it's Simon from The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe and like button as it really helps support my channel. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video are in the description down below. So there's a lot to unpack in this video. I'm going to talk about one thing and one thing only, and that's the rumored high megapixel camera. The new camera, call this the R3. And maybe it's going to be the R3, maybe not. I have some more information on what I think it could be called down below. But what the problem a lot of us had with this camera is it was supposed to have 150 megapixels. And that's a lot. For a full frame sensor, that's an awful lot. Look at the Fuji GFX100 provides 100 megapixels, but it's on a medium format sensor. Last year, Sony released the A7 IV, and it's capable of 61 megapixels. So 150 megapixels is a huge jump. I know what some of you might be thinking, yes, but we thought 8K video with autofocus, dual pixel autofocus, and being uncropped was a, a, a huge undertaking as well. And yes, that is true. And yes, that is several generations ahead. But we need to be a little bit realistic here. 150 megapixels on a full frame sensor would take some significant engineering. Yes, the RF lenses would be capable of providing enough detail to get that. But I thought it was far more realistic that we would see 150 megapixels from pixel shift technology. I believe the S1H or the S1, it's probably not the S1H, or it's, no, it's the S1R. And I believe that gives up to, up to 180 megapixels. And I'm not a big fan of pixel shift technology. I said so again in this video. Pixel shift technology needs everything to work in the perfect conditions. It needs to be completely stabilized on a platform that's completely stabilized. Any slight movement in clouds or grass or even the tripod itself, and we get blurry, we get artifacts. It's not very good. So I really doubted, I suggested in the video that we were likely going to get between 80 and 100 megapixels. And I stated so way back in this video that I published in early December. So let's get to the information that I have from Canon Rumors. Canon Rumors is, uh, I, I think, a lot more credible. Uh, when they put out rumors, they have a classification system, and it's gone from CR0 all the way to CR3. And Canon Rumors pretty well states that if it's a CR3, it's a fact, it's going to happen, and CR0 is more or less wishful thinking. So this rumor that they put out today is a CR2, which means it's good. It's from a known source. It's highly reliable. Again, these are rumors, so don't take them as gospel. Uh, rumors, they can change right up until something is published. I used to work in development, and quite often, right up until the 11th hour, we were adding features, working on features, and removing features. So this is a pretty good chance. Well, in terms of megapixels, let's, let's deal with that first. So this high megapixel camera is going to be twice that of the R5, according to the rumor. So what is the R5 capable of? Well, a lot of the rumors seem to point to 45 megapixels, but now that we've got 8K video confirmed, a lot are doubting that and suggesting that it's probably around 39. So not to argue the point, this new high megapixel camera on the RF mount is going to be between 80 and 90 megapixels. That's quite a bit. Remember, the a7 IV is capable of 61 megapixels. The glass on the RF system is really, really good. This will produce really good detailed results. Um, I, I, I could just imagine what the 28 to 70 lens would be able to produce on this, or the 70 to 135. Um, this is very exciting. But for the ordinary filmmaker, or for filmmakers in general, stay away from this. This is not for you. I've received a ton of comments from photographers saying, why are you guys always talking about video? Why can't we have a stills camera? Why can't we have a camera just for photographers? Well, this camera will have some video, but its primarily, primary use case is for stills photographers. It's not strong on video. It's also not really meant for high-speed sports action. That's where the 1DX Mark III comes in. And currently, we don't really have a camera on the RF platform that is really meant for fast action, high-speed sports photography. Now, if you look at the R5, 
it, it, it looks like it could function very well in that regard. It has 12 frames per second electronic, or sorry, mechanical, versus the 14 on the 1DX Mark III, and it has 20 frames per second electronic, just as the 1DX Mark III. But there's so much more we're missing there. We have no idea what the buffer's like, what the speed is in RAW, whether it has RAW, whether it has Heath, whether it has JPEG or any other file formats. There's so much that we don't know. So it's impossible to tell at this point without the full specifications of the R5 if it could function as a mirrorless version of the 1DX. And based on Canon's way of naming things, I would expect that the mirrorless equivalent of the 1DX Mark III would actually be the R1. So, when is this camera available? Initially, as I mentioned in this video way back in December, we were looking at sometime in the first half of 2020 prior to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. And even the Tokyo Olympics is in question right now. It looks like everything is being cancelled or postponed with more than groups of 20 or so. Right now it's looking like that this camera is going to be available in 2021. It could come out sometime this year. It's just really hard to know. Um, there's so many unknowns at this point. The coronavirus is having a huge impact around the world to businesses, to transportation, to manufacturing, to labor supply. It's just having a huge impact. So it could come out in 2020, but at this point, we just don't know. It's most likely going to be in 2021. So the next thing is, what is it going to be called? Well, the new camera said it's going to be called the R3. But they also said that we we're going to get 150 megapixels, and it could have pixel, pixel shift technology, which might give us 150 megapixels. But they didn't talk about their source too much, so I, it's hard to really, it's really hard to assess um, the credibility there. Canon Roos came out and said, yes, we have, it's from a known source. Yes, it's good. So I'm willing to more stick to what Canon Rumors is saying. As far as name, Canon Rumors didn't come out with a name, and really, does it matter? I don't think it really does, but here's my speculation. The 5D Mark IV um, is kind of a mid-level body. It's a full-frame camera. It's very good for wedding photography. Um, it's good for stills photography, but if you really want to go with high megapixels, then you're probably going to get the 5DS or the 5DSR. So what are we going to call this? Could be called the R3. But if I look at previous naming, let's take a look at the 5D Mark IV. We had three different bodies. We had the 5D Mark IV, we had the 5DS, and the 5DSR. The S and the S are being more high megapixel versions of the 5D Mark IV. I see the R5 as the successor to the 5D Mark IV in mirrorless version. There was a rumor last year that says that Canon is still going to be releasing the 5D Mark V, the last DSLR in that range. I haven't heard anything since. I don't know if that's still the plans. I think things are probably still up in the air, and that's one of those cameras where I could see quite easily being pushed into 2021, with the focus being on the R5. So they could call this high megapixel camera the R5S or the R5SR. Thank you for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. All equipment used and notes are placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on the mobile app.